Hello YouTubers, 2007 Hyundai Santa Fe 3.3 liter V6 and we will do spark plugs today. For the parts, obviously we need spark plugs, so we are using Champion, Iridium and also we would need Platinum Gasket. I will link, I will leave a link in the description to both. To get started we need to remove engine cover and that's one, two, three, four, five, six. 10 millimeter bolts, uh, nuts. Actually, four nuts on uh, each corner and two bolts in the middle. So now we can get the cover off. So now when we have access to the uh, front bank of the spark plugs, we will uh, remove the electrical connector and to get it off, you need to push this black piece uh, back and it's nice when engine is a little bit warm so when it's cold and frozen there is a chance that you will break it so make sure that the vehicle is warm so now you push this back and you push this gray piece in and you pull it out so one more time, I'll try to zoom in closer. So you push this black piece back and then you're able to press this in and pull the plug out. Next, we can go ahead and remove 10 mil bolts that hold the coils in. This one, I might need to use a wrench. So yeah, I'm not sure at this point if we will need to remove this bracket over here. But for now, we'll just get those bolts loose and we'll try to pull the coils out. Another thing that I should have mentioned before you start doing anything electrical related, disconnect your battery, since this will require to disconnect lots of wiring while we do the rear side on the spark plugs. So you still cannot get the coil out without removing this bracket. So just do it right away. It's 10 mil short bolts. It's little guys. So now we can pull out the coils and we will just store them in the same order as they've been installed before, just in case. So next what we will do, we will apply some compressed air inside it to get any dust out. And quite honestly, it's a good time to blow uh, any dust of the engine since we'll be removing air intake. But the most critical is to get anything out of the spark plug area. Next we'll use 5.8 um, spark plug socket. It's slightly different than from the regular. It has like a rubber lining inside, so when you when you get your spark plug out, it stays in the socket. And when you do this job, you don't want your engine to be hot, since there is a big chance that when you put new spark plugs in, they might get quite tight. Engine being hot, so. It's good when it's cold, worst case scenario you want it to be just slightly warm. And here's the spark plug, you can see it's slightly wet. Uh, the vehicle was started cold, it's minus 22 outside right now, so we will get the rest out. So since those spark plugs are made specifically for, those for this vehicle, you don't need to adjust the gap or anything. Um, also when you install the spark plug, you need to watch if you have uh, like a washer or you don't have a washer 
So if you have a washer, you go in finger tight and then do half of a turn. After that, if you don't have a washer, you do finger tight and then 1 16th of a turn. So basically we are finger tight now. So we'll do half of a turn just like that. And we will do the same for the others. So now when all the plugs are installed and tight, we will put the coils back. Before we do that, we'll apply some dielectric grease so the, the rubber part does not stick to the spark plug. So after another 100,000 case, if we came back and decided to change the spark plugs, they are easy to remove. And fun fact that I learned today is that on average, every car owner spends $400 a year for maintenance. What is quite a low number. And I am super glad to hear about that. So that means that either people maintain them regularly so they don't break that much, or they just don't maintain them. That's why the average is so low. Anyway, this car is uh, quite well maintained. So we can try to keep up with that to make sure that it runs well. Um, also, just to mention, it has 170 Ks and you can see that those spark plugs probably are still original. They're quite wore out. So we'll get those bolts tight, put our plug back on. It's quite sealed, so there is no need to use any sealant here. And then just press this clip back in and do the same for the rest. Next, we'll put this bracket back on just so it's out of the way we have less bolts in our tray to deal with. So those are short ones. So we'll put that back and we'll start removing stuff to get to the rear bank. So first thing we will remove this bracket. And in your case it might be attached to the wire. So here in our case the zip tie is broken, so we don't need to worry about that. We'll remove it from this harness, just to take it out of the way. So, short bolts to the intake, longer bolts to your bracket. So we'll pull this off. Next, we will do the same with the rear bracket. So, 10 mil socket. We'll also get this bolt out, just to make sure that this harness has a little bit more room to swivel. Next, we will remove the um, air box, air filter box cover and the air intake hose. So first, we will start with this hose coming here. Then we will remove, get loose the Post clamps. Then we will need to remove the electrical connector from the mass airflow sensor. Actually, let's let's get the cover off, and it will be easier to undo that connection. So we un unclip the 
Airbox. So we should be able to pull it off from the air intake. This most the clamp is loose. So we might need to go with the screwdriver in between the air intake and the hose to get it loose. It's probably stuck. Just like that. Now we can play with the muff sensor. So first thing you want to unclip that wiring clamp. Now you should be able to push this back. Similar way we done with the spark plugs. I should go back. I don't know why it has to be so tight. Now you press this on top and this will come off. Okay, so now we will just keep stripping this air intake. Since it has to come off completely. So this bracket will get loose. Next, we'll remove this bolt. Usually, V6 spark plug change. It's not too difficult. Just Time consuming. We'll just put this bolt back since it's kind of unique, so we don't want to. So now we'll remove this sensor wire and we need to remove this hose. So I guess I will remove the sensor itself so we don't damage it while we're removing the hose. Take the bolts to it. Okay. So now we can just use a channel lock to get this hose off. Also, a quick disclaimer: I'm doing this first time in this car, so watch it till the end before you start following the video. So here we will just get the hose loose since it's stuck. It's stuck quite well. Now it's broke. Okay. So step by step, we get around more and more. So there's another hose, you can see it. And same approach, we will try to get it loose. It's vacuum line. So just a small spin around. This seems like a plastic piece, maybe not. Anyway, be careful, don't break anything. All right, so next we will take a look on this side, what we can disconnect. So there is this. Connector, just push in and pull it out. Those two, uh, you don't need to undo the electrical connection. This bracket is held by a 12 mil bolt. So it's not only holding this bracket to the intake, it also holds the intake to the engine. So just over here, there is 12 mil bolt, so we'll use a wrench to get it off. Right, so my bad, it's actually 14 mil. 
and you can use ratchet with the socket and with the extension so we'll just it's 14 mil so we'll get it loose and it was quite tight so we'll get that loose and all this bracket with two connectors will come loose so now this is loose next we will remove this bracket that hold the i believe those are ac lines so 10 mil next we will disconnect this vacuum line and we just house clamp oh, actually it can be moved by fingers so we get that removed I just need to spin it same way as we did before with this channel lock so this line is loose next there is one more line over here just behind the throttle body so we'll get that off next we'll remove the wiring to the throttle body so first you need to remove this bracket and as a reminder is this type of bracket so you come with your screwdriver, press this tab on the side and pull it out. And the electrical connector itself is same style as this one. So you push this white or gray piece back and just press and pull out. Also, it's a good time to clean your throttle body. So we will use some carburetor cleaner and we'll clean that out too. I guess another option, would be just to remove these brackets 10 mil bolt over here instead of pulling this plastic connector off so whatever works better for you similar as on the other side there is a bracket that holds the intake to the engine and i will try to stick my camera there but also in that mirror you can see I'll just point it with the hose uh, so you can see that um, that bracket just at the bottom like that one over here so it's 12 mil and i will stick my camera maybe you will see it So that's this is the guy over here. So we will use 12 mil socket to get it off. So with the extension, that's where your wrench sits. So we'll get that off. Okay, so there is there is one more line to disconnect. This is a coolant line. So it comes out of the line that goes to your core heater though it's kind of hard to reach behind so we will probably just leave it until we get the intake out so we have better access at this point uh, we will go ahead and get so there is a line and it's kind of on the way of the bolt that holds the air intake so we will remove those bolts that hold this line underneath so it's one two bolts then we can push the line out then we will remove one two three four five and six fasteners either bolts or nuts that hold the air intake and then hopefully it will come out Okay, so first two bolts that hold that line that is on our way we'll use a little magnet here So this line is loose now, so we have clear access to those three bolts. So now we'll just use 12 mil socket to get the rest of the bolts and nuts off. Okay. 
nice tool to have when you work a lot on vehicles. I will leave a link in the description to the video. Then we have 10 mil over here. This is the long one. Okay, at this point we will try to remove it. Please remember that we still have that one coolant line over there. That's probably exactly what is holding it. Okay. Actually, there are two more lines. Two colon lines, my guess. So, I'll try to stick it like that. And now we have better access. So at this point, we have those two lines going to the throttle body, colon lines, and one way would be just to remove the lines. The other way would be to remove the throttle body. Uh, so then you would need, don't need to disconnect anything from the throttle body, though you would need a gasket. But at this point, to be quite honest, like <laughs> we have all access that we need to replace those uh, spark plugs. So, and this is the phantom gasket that I was talking about. So we won't even remove, play with those lines. We'll just get to the spark plugs as we need. The first thing that you want to do is to cover your air intake so nothing goes in. Just clean rag or paper towel would work. Next, we will just do the same thing that we've done on the other side. We will stick our screwdriver to pull that black plastic piece back and press and pull back next we will remove the 10 mil bolt that holds the coil that wire is kind of in the way so we'll pull our coils again stack them in the same way, in the same order as you get them out. And don't forget to blow uh, the well with the compressed air to clean any debris out of there. So nothing to film at this point, same procedure as on the other side. So our spark plugs are replaced. Next we will take a paper towel and clean the plenum before we remove the gasket so we just want to make sure that when we remove the gasket nothing falls inside so just quick wipe and try to push it outside when you're wiping it off so nothing gets in Considering that there is lots of junk on this side, I just plugged all the holes with the paper towel and when we're done, I'll just pull it out just to make sure that we don't get anything that's not supposed to be there in. So now we can remove that gasket and keep cleaning. See, there is quite a bit of oil. So, yeah, just make sure that this part is clean and also the bottom of the air intake where it hits the gasket is clean too. Okay, so now all the surfaces are clean, so we'll just remove this paper towel.
and we'll put the new gasket. Don't skip the step of replacing the gasket since any air leak will cause you issues. So now we should be good to put the air intake back. So we'll try to do it nice and gently. Need to pull this back. Don't force it should go in basically on its own so if it's not going then something is holding it so just find what is holding I think it's oh. all right so it seems to be back in place where it's supposed to be all right so our intake is in place next we will put all the bolts and nuts so we will do the front side first and then we will do those two bolts uh, two nuts or bolts bolts uh, 14 and 12 mil in the back so we'll just get everything started and so now we will torque everything this is M6 bolt, so I will. I don't have exact torque spec, but considering on the size, we will do 80 inch pounds, while those are M8, so we will do 200 inch pounds. So we started with this. Now we will go to this one. Just basically we'll move from the middle. Now this one, this one, this guy, and this one, so and we will do one more time. M6 with 80 inch pounds. So at this point, it's just a reverse procedure assembling everything back. So if you need help with that, please continue watching. Uh, if you feel like you're good, um, it should be the end for you. Um, so I want to thank everyone for watching. Please like and subscribe. I will keep continue assembling. So first we will attach this line with two bolts, 10 mil. It's quite labor and time consuming job, but not too difficult. So I would expect Average person can do it without any specific tools. Oh, there's the light flying down. So we'll get those tight. Next, we can plug this connector and get those two bolts in. Those tight. Next, we can connect this connector back in. So, at this point, we should be able to connect that fourteen mil bolt that holds. The, this bracket and air intake on the back 
and just a reminder on this side it's 14 mil while on the other side it's just 12 mil so when you get this tight just put a little bit of pressure on the back of the air intake there's not much you can do but if you just lean against it just to make sure that it's that bracket is holding it down not sure if it would help but definitely it will not hurt and you just will have just that extra support on the back from that bracket so next we will attach those lines with another 10 mil i guess you cannot really see so there are those lines so now we will do the other side bracket on the back so same thing lean on your intake get it tight that one was 12 mil next we will install this hose just slide it on and push the hose clamp on top now we will do this hose connect it to the throttle body same thing hose and a clamp this one is a little bit more stiff so we just use pliers to get it up now we can connect this bracket with the wiring so we put it here and that's that longer bolt 10 mil since this is the throttle body it holds the throttle body to the air intake we want to make sure that we torque it to 80 inch pounds too so don't quote me on torque since i don't have the official manual but that's what it usually takes for m6 bolts so now we will put this connector back in and as you remember after that we will need to push this gray piece uh, to the front so it locks it in place so one two all right so next what we can do we can put this line back in this will stay here for now so we will grab all this harness we will, uh, first we need to put this line in to make sure that we have access to that clamp so put that in now we will get our sensor in Let's do 10 mil bolts. Get them tight. Get the connector in. Next, we will do this bracket. And it has this sleeve on the bolt. As I mentioned before, I have cleaned the throttle body since we have good access, so why not? For that, I used this Clean R Carb. Really awesome thing. One thing to consider, have a face mask on since it's quite nasty stuff. You don't want to breathe it in. Next, we'll put the um, air filter housing back. Though, considering that this is clean side, Make sure that you take an uh, air compressor and blow everything out of it, just in case something falls in. So we'll put the filter housing back on. So this, there is the groove 
and the two rubber like tongs make sure that it fits properly over there uh, next we will get that hose clamp tight then we will install this hose back and the clamp that holds it in place we'll use our pliers And it's quite important on the injector engines to get all the intakes sealed well. So now we have this wire, so we will stick it the bracket to hold it. And then same thing, remember to lock it with this gray piece and lock it in. So now we just Clamp the air filter housing. My apologies, my phone died. Uh, so I went ahead and attached this uh, uh, top bracket, two short bolts, then the bottom bracket, one and two short bolts, and then three bolts that are holding this wiring harness in. So the last step is to put the engine cover back. So we'll just place the engine cover back on. So we have oops, another light going down. So we have two bolts in the middle. And we have four nuts on each corner of the cover. All of them are M6, 10 mil, 10 mil socket. So anyway, I won't keep you any longer. I will get those tight. Thanks for watching, please like and subscribe, and as always, do it yourself.